This video is all about my ongoing battle with this. This is More Beers UK Bittersweet Apple Juice Concentrate. It really is the only year-round source of bittersweet concentrate that home brewers can get in the United States. While it produces a super flavorful cider result, it has one real critical problem. It produces what can be considered a pretty excessive stable haze. I personally tried a number of ways to get this haze to clear. Bentonite, Sparkloid, Biofine Clear, Just Waiting, and it seems that it really has no good way to get cleared until I created this method. I was watching an episode of How to Drink on YouTube, and I saw that Greg, the host of the channel, he was using a method to clear a orange juice called agar clarification. Doing a little bit of additional research, I found that agar clarification is used in cocktail making, but the quantities they use for agar clarifications and the method they use, aka filtering, is not really conducive to any sort of cider making techniques. So I took some time and did a bunch of experimentation and landed at this process that you will see in the video here. This technique is useful for any sediment-based haze like you can find inside the bittersweet apple juice concentrate, as well as any cloudy apple juice that you can find in the store. Hello everybody, welcome back, and in today's video we're going to have a little bit of a cool one. We're going to be uh, clarifying some, uh, some cider using uh, a plant-based uh, gelatin referred to as agar. Um, the cider I have on the right, I mean, you can kind of see the stratification layers right now as it's going from more cl less cloudy to more cloudy as you go down. Um, but if you look at this first stratification layer here, this is probably as clear as it's going to get on its own. Uh, what we're going to try and do is make this crystal clear. And we have a method to do that that doesn't revol involve the use of uh, like gelatin. Um, we are going to use agar instead. The reason why this will work um, as opposed to uh, something like bentonite, um, is that bentonite requires a lot of agitation in order to drag down these positively charged ions. Meanwhile, the uh, agar acts more of like, uh, it, it bonds all of the materials in it, all of the kind of loose particulate, and coagulates down at the bottom, makes it sink. So uh, agar doesn't really care about the charge, so we can get stuff that is really difficult for, for bentonite to clear. It's kind of the similar process that um, gelatin does as well. It just coagulates all of these, um, it, it traps and coagulates all of these loose particles down here. And what ends up happening is that you have a large mass of uh, particles down at the bottom that have been entrapped. In order to, to, to facilitate this, we're going to need to prepare our agar mixture. And our agar mixture is relatively simple. We have about, um, I, my usual ratio here is going to be two grams. Uh, two grams of agar to one cup of water, and then boil that. Uh, you can use as much as three uh, for a five gallon batch, three grams, or as little as one for a five gallon batch, depending on how much clarification you need. Uh, I found two grams kind of the sweet spot, so we're going to go ahead and doing that. Um, the process is relatively simple. You bring the agar, uh, the water and agar mixture, up to a boil, and then you put it directly in the top of it, and you agitate the top part of it a little bit, to get it making sure that the agar doesn't stick to the sides of the fermenter, then it'll, it'll clear out naturally very quickly. The first question you might ask, wouldn't this just clear out naturally by itself? Um, it has these uh, stratification layers, and that should clear out naturally, right? The, the more heavy, the light stuff starts to pull down uh, and get more and more heavy as it goes down to the bottom. And the answer to that is yes, yes it will. Um, but it'll only, likely get as clear as this top layer, which is what I had mentioned earlier. Um, we want it to be crystal clear, because this is going to be for a uh, competition submission, so we're going to be doing our own uh, special clarification. Also, this used the UK Bittersweet Concentrate, which I have found um, is also leaves the, the brew quite turbid and takes a long time to clear. Um, we're talking about almost a year to clear out <laughs> and then it's loose and wispy at the end. So even moving it towards the end of, uh, after it's cleared can cause it to remix back up and then unsettle. And it's really not a very fun experience to try and clear that. We're gonna take a pause here really quick from editor Kevin, and we're going to say that the one most important step after doing this is to actually cold crash the brew. What we're going to see here is that when we use the agar clarification without cold crashing the brew, the agar does not coagulate. 
The agar requires a temperature below what normal room temperature is to coagulate. I think it's somewhere around 60 degrees, but I haven't been able to test that yet. What I can say is the temperature that you need to get the agar to is achievable by an ice bath or by a refrigerator. I waited a day for this to clear, and it did not clear as expected since it was at room temperature, and I went ahead and transferred this into a secondary. I did this method twice with two different brews. The first one, I used a cold crash in the sink using just some ice packs. This was cold crashed overnight, and the final cleared brew can be seen here. The second brew I cleared, I cleared using a refrigerator to cold crash instead. This is just to demonstrate that both methods are valid for coagulating the agar and getting everything to settle down at the bottom of the fermenter. This technique is most effective with sediment type haze. I've done this technique five times so far, and of the five times, four of them cleared successfully. The fifth time, I did this trying to clear a graph, and it appears that the haze that was caused there was actually a protein haze and not a sediment haze. So. Uh, that'll be my main caveat for this. That this is used primarily for sediment haze and most effective clearing loose sediment haze. All right, so we have shown both the uh, failed way to clear with agar and the correct way to clear with agar. You need to reduce the temperature of your cider below where the agar can actually gel and set. A couple of pitfalls that you may have even after this process is that the first one is uh, some of the agar might stick to the surface and you'll see these little strands coming down from the surface. What I would recommend is just use some surface tension, uh, something to break the surface tension. So maybe like a sanitized uh, bottling wand or something around that type of uh, size in order to get it that, uh, that stuff that's stuck to the surface broken down so it falls naturally. The second thing to keep in mind is that uh, this will still take a little bit of time to clear. This has taken only two days to clear after we did that initial uh, cold crash. Um, the temperature we brought it to wasn't that low. It was like 50 degrees. Uh, we just put in a sink full of ice and then took it out. And that was enough to gel the agar and bring everything down to the bottom. The, there will be a little bit of wispiness at the bottom, as you can see. Um, overall, it looks like we lost about anywhere between a half to three quarters of a gallon. Uh, of our cider. That is an okay loss ratio. This is something you're just going to have to deal with. So if you want to do this method, you have to understand that you are going to get losses. Losses is an inevitable part of clearing a cider. If you are okay with a hazy cider and there's nothing technically wrong with it, then just don't do this process. Um, I recommend though, if you are doing competition stuff and they require clarity and you are using something that is really hard to clear, such as the juices on, that are labeled as cider inside the United States that have a stable haze in them, those are very hard to clear, and the uh, UK cider blend concentrate, uh, the one from More Beer, that is incredibly hard to clear. This cider here had both of those in it and it was able to remove all of that with just a simple agar clarification at a ratio of two grams per five gallons um, with one cup of agar, or one cup of water. That's it. And that is, this is a remarkable amount of clarity for this. So, um, I'm going to be using this process for brews that I submit to competition, and you will just hear me say I did agar clarification, and this is what I mean. Uh, I did this process. So. I'm gonna get this racked into a keg and uh, let it, uh, basically let it carbonate and this will be uh, ready for competition uh, after a couple of weeks. Um, so, uh, oh, one final note. Agar is a polysaccharide and that is just a big word to say that it is sugar. So, one thing that you want to make sure prior to adding any agar to your brew is that you have stabilized it with potassium metabisulfate and potassium sorbate. I highly recommend doing that beforehand. Um, yeast and other microorganisms love to eat agar, which you might remember from your uh, biology classes if you were a kid and took them, was they would put out these petri dishes. Petri dishes are basically just agar. They, they do this process of gelling the agar, they set it inside the petri dishes, inside a sterilized petri dish, and then you apply a microorganism to it and it proliferates. This is, that, this is that same stuff. So just keep this in mind whenever you are making something with agar that 
you are attracting microorganisms to your brew. This is stuff they love to eat. So only do it after you after you have stabilized. So I think that's it for my my uh, uh, kind of words of caution of this. Um, uh, this is a really effective uh, plant-based way to remove uh, stubborn haze, and it doesn't use gelatin that, uh, that gets derived from animals, and this is just a really nice way to go about doing that. So, highly recommend you give this a try. Um, also, one thing to mention, when you're racking, this stuff at the bottom is kind of wispy. You want to be very careful when you're racking. Make sure you don't go too low, or you're going to start sucking up some of the sediment. It will clear out again, because it has gelled, but it will take time to do that, so just keep that in mind. Anyway, that's it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed this process. This is a process that I created based off of some um, cocktail mixology stuff, and I'll, I'll put a link in the description here. Um, the ratios that they put inside that are not what we would use. They put an insane, like 1% per volume ratio of uh, in grams. That is not what you need to clear this. So it is one to three grams per gallon, depending on the amount of clarity you need. And that mix with one cup of boiling hot water. You mix it beforehand and you boil the water with the agar in it. will produce this result. So, um, that's it. Uh, thank you all for watching this video. Um, if you enjoyed these kind of tips and techniques, just, uh, I produce kind of content like this occasionally. So, <laughs> I can't say all the time, but occasionally. And I, I really love to improve people's level of knowledge and try new things. Uh, this is one of the things I'm particularly proud about. This is exceptionally effective and I think that you should try it if you are looking for a way to clear your cider effectively. Anyway, that's going to be it for today. Uh, sorry for all the tangents. Appreciate you guys. Cheers and happy cidering.